just in case you're keeping score, uh, by my card here, I'm thinking I've got a little bit less than four hours in all of this so far. That means from basically taking it out of the case to having all these things apart, sawed apart, and then new parts put back in and the angle re Attached. So I have to recarve all these parts now tomorrow. That should only take maybe an hour, I would think. Then I'm going to have to put the truss rod in it and glue up the fretboard. That probably will only take about 45 minutes, another 15 or so minutes to set it back up. We may have to do an hour's worth of detailed setup on it too you just never know so maybe about another three hours work so a total of about seven hours on this to me that's a pretty fast fix you know maybe somebody else could do it faster but i that's pretty quick if you ask me As you can see, I started uh, running this through there to try to shape this uh, cutout to the peg head, but quite honestly, it's a bit much to ask for the sander, um, plus the sanding paper that's on there is pretty old. I thought maybe I'd see if I could get this out of there before I change the paper, but I believe I'm going to have to change it in order to just cut this, uh, because that's, that paper is just too dull to cut this very well. This maple is incredibly hard. I may just go ahead and try to shape it by hand a little bit before I get that far. I'm going to ask Emery to hold a vacuum cleaner while I use a grinder to grind off some of the just heavy duty stuff. I'm not going to take off very much. Uh, with this, but it'll just be better than trying to do it by hand. So here we go. Bill Monroe is the father of bluegrass. He's the one that gave us all this joy. He picked up an old Gibson mandolin and formed a band called Bluegrass Boys. He's known far and wide for his picking, and we've all tried to copy his style. Well, now for those of you who like to hear it, I could probably take off more with that, but boy, I tell you what, that thing, it takes it off so fast that you have to be so careful. I'm just not going to press my luck, so we'll do some more, but it'll be by hand. This actually will do a rougher job, but I am uh, at least doing it by hand so I can control it. My biggest problem is work holding. I'm not holding this very well. It's not, it's not in a convenient way for me to work on it. So I'm gonna try something a little different. I don't know if this will help, but turn it this way and see if I like it this way better. We'll see. We'll all hear that mandolin ring. So next time you're out in the evening, look and see if that old moon is blue. Yeah, that's a little better, but I still kind of feel awkward about it. This clamp is kind of in my way. Yeah, that's helping, but we're still a long ways off, and this just doesn't feel comfortable. I've got to find a better work holding thing. I've got a vise that could possibly hold it here, but I'm not sure that'll help me much. I'm going to investigate that and see. Well, I'm still experimenting with work holding. This isn't the best, um, but I'm going to give it a shot. You hear that guitar ring, don't you love to hear Bill sing? That old bluegrass sound makes me smile. And while I'm on this earth, I'm gonna pick for all I'm worthy for. I'm picking in that sweet by and by banjo. That's working, but not 
even great either. Turn it over on this other side and see if I can get anything done. Starting to approximate the shape, but there's a lot to go yet. I think I'm gonna think about it a little bit and try something else. Well, I'm gonna try this again. I have got new sandpaper on the sander, so it might work now. Don't really know. Just gonna have to get it, give it a shot. Did you hear that banjo ring? Don't you love to hear Bill sing? That old bluegrass sound makes me smile. And while I'm only certain going to pick for all I'm worth before I'm picking in that sweet by and by fiddle. That's a perfect fit now. And the peg head itself wasn't real flat, so I went ahead and just ground all that off and made it smooth. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to match the stain anyway, so this will just make it one perfect flat surface and the stain will match much better. And now we're back on to the, the edges here and this other stuff. And I think I may go over to the spindle sander for a little while and see how this works on the edges. I don't know. Just going to try different techniques till I get her shaped. I've raised this up a little bit where I can get into some fresh sandpaper. And I'm going to give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Base. Hear those fiddles ring, don't you love to hear Bill sing? That old bluegrass sound makes me smile. And while I'm only certain going to pick for all I'm worth before I'm picking in that sweet by and by. After all the uh, thickness sanding on my thickness sander and the spindle sander, um, it's getting pretty close. You know, we still got quite a bit of work to do, but we're going to make it turn out be real nice so let's get started on the rest of it I keep trying different techniques and options and so I think I'm going to try the Dremel now watching the leaves fall to the ground just like my life they're spinning around the touch of the wind the clouds rolling on reminds me of when life was a song well there's some more pretty good shaping there with the uh, Dremel tool. It's not finished by any stretch, but uh, you know, each step takes it a little closer. I intend to leave a, a fairly good amount of wood right here uh, because that's the weak place and uh, it's going to be weak because we're going to be drilling a big hole in here and fixing that all out, so uh, putting the truss rod back in. So I definitely want to leave a good amount of wood there and that's the way I do all of my mandolins. Mine are designed this way where they have a little extra wood there so when you make this weak spot, which is what causes them to break, you know, this, this should be beefed up enough plus the maple it's almost impossible to break maple, uh, you know, in a situation like this anyway. Um, I mean, sure, you could stress it to the point where it breaks. Anybody could do that. But, but it's, I would say, near impossible to break this. And the joint with the tight bond wood glue was clamped really well, so I don't think that'll break. I'm pretty sure this is a permanent fix once we get it shaped back to the proper shape. That's the hard part. I don't know if I'm ready for this little file yet, but I'm going to try it and see where I'm at with it. Now, I still got quite a bit of shaping to do, so 
I'm gonna kick around with another tool or two here and see what I can come up with. Even as nice as that is, that uh, still is going a little too slow to suit me. I'm gonna try the finger plane. Now, the finger plane would work. The problem is that it may grab this grain. I might even just go ahead and put the, the tooth blade in this. In fact, I think I will, because um, I think that'll carve it much better. So I've got the tooth blade here. It feels pretty sharp, but it looks like the factory grind on it, so I think I'm gonna sharpen that a little bit more. It's, it's pretty sharp, it would probably work, but I think I'm gonna do a little more. So I'm just gonna take the old uh, Arkansas stone here, the fine, and I'm gonna rotate this uh, oval blade a little bit and try to get it honed to a little finer edge. This is not bad, it's just I kinda of think it can be better. But I may be able to do it with the stone here enough. That feels really sharp. I'll hone it on the leather here a little bit, just in case. Let's just see if this will even cut anything. I'm not even sure it will, but we'll give it a shot. If it will cut, it'll probably be the fastest way to get rid of this wood. I barely have it protruding. It may not cut on that, but we'll see. That hard wood, that hard curly maple, it's, it's really hard. Yeah, it would be nice if um, it was just straight maple where I could carve it easier. This stuff just isn't going to carve very easy, I can tell. It's, you know, if you could carve the, the way the grain wants to be carved, but in this odd shape, that's almost impossible. So. I guess I'm going to have to go back to files and rasps and sanders and things and see where we go from there. Oh, we laughed was a song we dance and we'd sing We laughed was a song But it's fell down Since we were gone I did quite a bit more sanding with the Dremel tool off camera. Got it pretty close. It still, you know, needs work. It's proud of the, of the old neck yet, but uh, it's very good. This, this part here, you can't feel that at all. I mean, like it's not even there. Of course, we'll have to re-drill the holes, but that part there is perfect. This part here, hopefully will be eventually. But right now, I still got quite a bit of work to do. I think I'm down to the point where I need to do it by hand now. We're gonna scuff up the old finish, there's no doubt about that, but that's okay. It'll be easier to match it if it's all off of there anyway. The sun in the sky has disappeared. It's Well, just that little bit of filing makes it feel kind of like a neck now. There's still some roughness to it, but it's getting close. I think I'd still need a little bit more aggressive file. This file is just not quite an aggressive enough, but yet I don't want to go too much. This file might be good enough. Whispering creek that's rolling along. That's looking pretty good. Well, my friends, I think that's just about to the final shape. So I'm gonna sand it now. 
I do not think you can feel the groove, the uh, transition at all. The trick on sanding this is that the maple is two or three times harder than this mahogany or whatever the other wood is, and I think it's mahogany. But the maple is several times harder, so you really have to concentrate everything on the maple and barely touch the other. That's why I know this isn't going to break again, because this maple is so very, very difficult, you know, so very, very hard that it isn't going to flex and it isn't going to break. And the glue joint, having that much surface, should be a plenty strong glue joint. So, in my opinion, this neck is now fixed better than it possibly was fixed when he made it brand new. I would say it's at least as strong, if not probably several times stronger. You seriously cannot feel that at all now. I mean, like not even a tiny bit. That's looking good. I'm gonna have to do some sanding up here too. I'm gonna have to get out, do the detail sanding around the neck here see that it's going to be much better and that extra thickness right here will be great when I start plowing all this out for the truss rod so having that extra thickness there just makes that neck much stronger than it was before so when you're making a mandolin like this and you're planning to put a truss rod in it you ought to think about this area because this area needs this area needs to be as strong as it can be so don't go don't keep it this flat and then come right to your neck because if you do you're going to really have a problem well i'll finish up the rest of the sanding off camera and then i'll show you the next step okay it's time to get the holes re-drilled in this so we got to drill them through the back here I've got her set up. I believe it's ready to go. So here we go. That should take care of that. Well, if the footage turned out on the other camera, you just saw me drill these holes. And so we're one step closer. We've only, the last step here is just cutting out for this truss rod. And then we're pretty much to, ready for assembly after that. Well, I took a lunch hour, I came back and assessed this. That's what I like to do is get away from it for a little while and look at it. Um, I took more off of this so that this is a, you know, basically it got a little bit heavy back this way again. So I took that back down. Is it heavy? Er than it used to be probably still but I'm trying to leave as much meat there as I can for the stiffness but yet I'm trying to get rid of the feel and it feels fine honestly it feels really good so I think I'm gonna leave it there for, at least for now once we get the fingerboard back on it I may feel something differently but right now I gotta tell you it feels perfect I can tell by looking at it that this is a little bit crooked here so I'm gonna Try to straighten that out a little bit more. Probably take a little bit more off of this side right here. That's just a look thing. But uh, anyway, I'll probably work on that some more later. Right now, I'm going to turn my attention to the front side and go ahead and get this slot uh, milled back in here, at least up to the peg head point. And I'll do that with my Dremel tool and a base. So here we go. It occurred to me that some of you might like to see this angle gauge and how it applied back to this finished neck. And the problem is I can't really show it to you the way I made it because I I made this new piece with this heel here and the, the old piece didn't have that. So this used to lay right on the old piece. But I can sort of simulate it by showing you from the side here and you can sort of tell that it matches pretty close to the original angle if you look at it like that I mean it's pretty close it's you know is it perfect probably not but close enough that I think you can sort of tell that it matches pretty well anyway it did match before I put that notch on there the, uh, you know I held this on there and, and then clamp these both in place and then trace these angles onto the other piece and then cut this piece. You know, so I use this to set these angles back 
and then I cut this piece and put it on there and then I more or less threw this away. I didn't need it. I actually fished this back out of the trash can to show you what I just showed you there. But it does actually match pretty close. Yeah, it would have maybe been better to do it from this side. You could, I guess, make a case for that. But I wanted it on this side. I don't know why it seemed easier for me uh, the way it worked. But you could do it either way. Anyway, there you go. Um, it's working pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, I'm set up to cut this slot. I'm gonna just do it freehand without any guides or anything because it's just faster and I think I can pull it off. So here we go. Okay, I'll have to turn it around so I can cut the other side that I can see. Although it looks pretty close already. Actually, it looks real close. So probably don't have to do too much there. Okay, that was fairly painless up to that point. So you can kind of see there that now we have the slot extended. Now I'll come in from this side with a hand, to, hand dremel and clean this all out and make this bigger also so that we can get a wrench in there. And yet you can tell we'll have enough meat in this area that it won't be a problem. So, you know, compared to the way it was built originally, I think that was the reason this thing broke. I mean, it's a combination of, of the fact that it was built pretty small and the fact that it was this kind of wood, that stuff just breaks. That's why all the Les Pauls break as I think I mentioned. So here we go. I try to give you a different perspective on this. Got that spun up a little bit fast for that thing sticking out that far. Now yeah, that's cutting pretty well, but I'm gonna try a different tool and see if I can get in there just a little bit better. You can see the cutter I have here now, it's tapered. Um, the spiraled ones of this work much better. This is a very abrupt cutter with the straight flutes, but I'm hoping I can get in there and use it. The problem I have to watch about this is it'll run up this side here and run across there. So I gotta be careful with that. This has been broke across there. Um, it did that whenever I took all this apart, but I really have to be careful with this so that it doesn't run up this side. It won't run up this side, it'll be fine on this side, but on this side, it'll run right up this side and go right over that. Ask me how I know. Well, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna to have to do some measuring in here to see how deep I am, because I wanna go deeper, I think, but I wanna make sure I don't go too deep, so I'm gonna measure that. Probably the very easiest way to know your depth on something like this is just to measure the thickness here, like I'm doing right here. And I'll have to read that, and, and it says 570 thousandths. And then you can take this and go in here on your depth and see how deep you are. That's 355 thousandths. So, you know, three, uh, 570 to 355. So we've got, you know, more than 200 thousandths we could go before we're at that. So another 100 thousandths out of here wouldn't hurt anything. And I think I'll probably do that. I wish this cutter was a little longer. This cutter is kind of short compared to some of the stems on some of the cutters. I'd like to hold it out as far out as I can. The problem is the further you stick it out, the more it chatters and rattles. Okay, let's just take a quick measurement on that. We know the thickness is 570 and our depth there is 437 so we're still a hundred and fifty thousandths hundred and forty thousandths uh, good on the back side which is more than an eighth of an inch on this back side so we're good there and I think I'm gonna stop right about there now I need to find a way to cut this off more square and I could sort of kind of use the same tool but that's a little hard to do 
So I think I'll retool again and try something else. Quite honestly, holding it this, this way is a little bit awkward, but I'm trying to get a good camera view for you, so I just have to do what I can. And that's pretty good, but not quite like I want it yet either. Gonna call that good enough for right now. Now we gotta get a hole punched through here, which is not crazy easy to do either. So, I don't know. I think I might just try this tool and see if I can kinda of bore a hole through there with this tool and see what that does. It's not quite all the way through yet, but I'll just take a little drill now and I think I can get it to go in there and make a, make a hole and we'll just work it out from there. Here's a 3 16 bit. I haven't even tried it yet to see if I can get in there. I'm a little bit afraid I'm going to rub this peg head. Even though this peg head's pretty crude, I'm not too worried about it, but I don't want to rub it if I can help it. So I'll put that card there, kind of get it out of my way. About as good as I can do, I think, for now, and we'll move on from there. You can see that the original truss rod fits right back down in there, no problem at all. And I could call that good enough and we could be done with this. But you know me better than that. What I'm trying to do is just look to see if I've got any room to do what I want to do, and I'm not sure I do. I want to put an underbow in that truss rod because if you just stop and think about it, just think of it like this, as simple as this example is, if your hand is, and forget the thumb, but your hand is, is pretend that's the neck, and let's say it's got an underbow in it, and if I got my truss rod across here and I tighten it up, what am I doing? What am I doing to that neck? If I'm tightening that truss rod up, a straight truss rod does nothing. On the other hand, if I've got a small cup in that neck, and I have my truss rod under bent like this, and then I have wood on top of it and wood on the ends of it where it can't straighten out, then when you, when you do straighten this out, that lifts the middle. That lifts the middle, and that will push the back these parts down. And that's how a truss rod works. So a straight truss rod like this, in my opinion, is absolutely your worst enemy. I, you know, I see lots of mandolins, lots of guitars with straight truss rods, and in my opinion, they're completely wrong. It just makes no sense at all. It just defies all logic. I think people just put them in there because they think they have to have one, and they put them in like that. And you don't have to take my word for this. I, if you look at the Roger Simonoff book, he'll show you that same thing, especially in the original book. I don't know. I've just worked off the original book. I haven't looked at his most recent book in terms of the truss rod. But his first book made all kinds of sense on the truss rod. And so that's how I do it. I don't even know what kind of steel they made this out of. I don't know how flexible it is. I would imagine I can bend it. But the problem is, I can already tell it's set right at the bottom of that, of that slot. I don't know if I can make this work or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. You know, I may regret it, but I'm going to give it a try. Okay, to do this, <clears throat> I'm holding this truss rod in really strong pliers, and I'm going to try to bend it down first. Ugh, very hard to do, but I think you can see I put a little bend in it. Maybe more than I need. Now I'm going to put an underbow in that to bring it back up. And I have to be careful to try to do this exactly in line with this. Oh, it's hard on my hands these days. But that's about the only way to do a good underbow here. I can here. try to use my little vise. I don't think it's going to be strong enough. Quite honestly, his rod is stiffer than the rod that I typically use. Um, so. I'm not exactly expecting good results here. Yeah, it's bending a little bit. I'm just going to kind of bend a long arc back up to this. It's not, not much of an arc yet. The other side of this has to have basically the same thing. It has to have a, a bend. Yeah, it's just, this seriously is a much stronger steel than I typically use in my truss rods. 
Um, I'm not sure where we landed there. I'm going to try putting this in the hole and see how far down it goes and all that. I have a feeling it's not going to work real well yet. It's not terrible. I may just live with that. I would like to have... I don't have the room, I don't think, the way this neck is made and everything, the way everything's worked out here. I would like to be able to put the same straight bend back in this, but unfortunately I don't think I've got the room or the clearance. So I've got a slight under bow in this part. That's probably all we're going to get out of this. I really don't think we're going to get much more. I'm tempted to just, you know, grind the top of this back off to, to where we get flush. It's not a simple one. You just kind of have to make compromises sometimes. And I kind of think that's where we're at here. I think we're just going to have to make a compromise. I think I'm just going to take it out of there and take it over to a grinder and get and cut the top of this off so far. And I'll maybe try to mark that with this. I don't know if I can see the mark is my problem. I kind of don't think I can, but let's see how that works. If at all. There we go. All right. That's not much of a bend, I'll have to admit, but it's better than no bend, and that's where we were before. Looks like he broke a drill bit off in this when he made this. There's a drill bit broken off down in that hole right below the truss rod. Uh, no, it's not a drill bit, it's a tap. He broke a tap off down in there. So he, he had the hole down there and he moved it up here. Doesn't really make that much difference though. I'm just pointing that out just because you can, you can kind of see the history of things and how they evolved. I think that's going to be better than what we had. It's not quite as good as I would like, I'll be honest, but you can only do so much sometimes. Um, it's definitely better than what we had. So I'm going to go grind the top of this down where it's going to fit in this hole. Okay, I have fit this in here a couple times now off camera and I know it works pretty good. So I'm going to call that good enough. What I want to do now is find a piece that'll fit underneath this because um, I don't want it. I want to have this thing sandwiched in here tightly, and so I have to make a little wedge that fits under here, which will strengthen it some for the pull because it'll be pulling on this whole base. I don't want this rod to be able to move much. I, I, you know, I don't want it to straighten out on its own. I want it to lift here in the middle. So in other words, when it's pulling on all this underneath here, it can't do much there. It's going to have to pull up on this. And even though I don't have very much bend in this, at least that's better than what it was. Okay, the angle on this won't be very good for you, but I just need to make a small little fill piece to sit in here and I'm just going to use my real fine pencil and mark it off and so that little tiny piece right there is what's going to go under that truss rod at the back end so I'll go cut that out okay here's how it looks you can see there that it just kind of sits underneath there like that and it's going to go down in this hole I hope now I'm probably going to put it in here dry first. I had to cut all this out by hand, uh, as you remember, and so I think there's a little bit of stuff left on the sides here, so I'm going to have to get rid of some of that in order to get this down in there. Some of that fill piece that was in there is in the way, so I have to get rid of that. I think that'll let it go down in there now, I think. Well, I kind of think so, but I, I'm not positive. Still. A lot of stuff there on the sides. In fact, I, I better go ahead and clean up all this because I've got to put a fill in here anyway. So I'm going to have to clean all this up. I'll clean that up off camera. I think I have it cleaned off good enough to try this. Now I'm going to try it dry again before I go committing to glue on this. And if you want to know why, well, it's just a good practice to try things dry because you never know how they're going to go and they might not fit and here's a case where I might have to take just a little bit off my wedge although not very much it's pretty darn close to fitting this is just a hair proud and the wedge is in there pretty good but I'm gonna to have to take just a fuzz off that to to make it work 
And then while I have it out of here this time, I'm going to make a top wedge also, or top fill piece. But I think on this one, I'm just going to go over to the sander and hold it on the sander and kind of press it on there, the belt sander, and just take a little bit off the bottom of this. That's really all it. Okay, I took a little bit more off than I had planned on, only just because I wanted to, you know, only have to do this this last time, and I know it'll fit now. I'm pretty convinced of that. So I'm going to put a little glue right down in the very bottom here, and I'll just take a small brush and spread that out, and try not to get it on the sides, just on the bottom. And then I'll put this piece in. Get it right up to the edge of the hole there. Good as it can be done, I think. Just for sanity check, I'll just make sure that this does fit in there still. Yep, and it fits flush, no problem. So now I just gotta get it back out of there. And now I'm gonna draw the profile on the top. Actually, it's probably good that I mark it a little bit here before I get it out of there. I think I want to mark down here how long I want this piece to be. All right, so now to do the top piece, it's just really the opposite of the other one. I can, should be able to use this same block. Probably ought to just go ahead and square this end off and then it'll be easier. Okay, I have it cut the length and lined up here and I'm just gonna draw this and the top the top piece is the piece I need. So I'll just saw off the bottom here, the waste, waste part. Okay, we're going to put this in here, I hope, for the final time, I think. That's going to go down in there. This should right up on here. I'm going to probably have to do a little bit of work on this end. Not too bad. I think what I'll do is just round this end off to make it match kind of this up here where I don't have to do a bunch of cutting in there. I think it's gonna work. You can see the little line on there. That's how deep it goes in there. So just this top will be cut off, same way on this side. I think I'm good with that. You know what I think I might do though, because I've got some extra here, I think I'm gonna take and trench this a little bit where this will fit down over that rod a little bit. That'll let you even go down in there just a little bit deeper which will just make it a little bit sturdier, a little stronger. Only takes a second to do it, so I might as well do it. That looks like a nice little trench that'll follow the shaft all the way. That, yeah, that definitely puts it in deeper. Let's see if if it's any appreciably, you know, if there's any real difference, but I think there is. It's not that much, but you can see there that, uh, you know, the top line, you know, it went in, you know, like a 30 second deeper or something. So that's, you know, every little bit of strength matters. So there you go. So it's just that much stronger than it would have been. Gives you that much more gluing surface. So I'm going to go ahead and get the glue on the surface here and very carefully put it on the sides, not get it anywhere else. And I'll have to be even more careful on this. That looks pretty good. Clamp her up and hopefully it'll stay there. I'll show you what that looks like once I get her all clamped up. Well, there's what she looks like all clamped back up. So probably in the morning then, we'll put the fingerboard back on this thing. We're getting close.